In this section, we'll focus on what a request code is and how to pass a request code. We'll also cover how to set up and retrieve results. A request code is an integer you pass to an activity to help you identify it. You get the same value back when the activity finishes. Android doesn't care which values you use since the values only have meaning to you. Android doesn't use them. The key idea is to pass a different value to each activity you start. You can think of it as an identifier unique to each target activity. All activities report results via the same method in code. The request code is returned with the results to identify the target. Suppose you have a source activity that invokes several target activities and you need to get results back from each of them. Every target that finishes causes the same method in source to execute, that source's overload of on activity result. In cases like this, the source activity needs some way to determine which target activity the current results are coming from. This is the role of that result code. You pass a different request code to each target activity you start, and you automatically get the same code back as one of the parameters in your on activity result method. This action lets you identify which target activity caused the current invocation of on activity result. You can then execute different code in response to that request code, such as in an if or switch statement. When your source activity needs a result back from the target activity, you call start activity for result to launch that target. This method requires the request code you pick to identify the target activity, as well as the intent you typically create to launch an activity, which can include any bundle arguments. Calling this method will tell Android to call your source's on activity result when the target activity finishes, passing back that same request code you provided. A result code is an enumerable value a target activity uses to indicate success or failure. The type of the result code is an enum named result. There are only three values, OK, Cancelled, and First User. OK and Cancelled are self-explanatory, however First User might be a bit confusing. The idea of First User is that it gives you a safe way to return code of your choice, neither Cancelled nor OK. First User is the first value you should give a custom return code. If you want to return a custom code, simply make sure the integer value is larger than first user so you know it won't conflict with any system-defined values. A target activity can also return a bundle to the source activity that started it. This offers a way to return multiple data values. The normal restrictions on bundles are still in place here, so you can only load it with simple types or serializable objects, but the process is the same. Your target activity uses its setResult method to report its results back to the source. There are overloads for two common cases, when you have only a result code, and when you have both a result code and a bundle stored inside an intent. Calling setResult does not cause your target activity to end, and if you don't call setResult to choose a result code explicitly, when your activity ends, the result code will default to result.canceled. You override onActivityResult in your source activity to receive these results. Android calls this method automatically when a target activity ends. There are three parameters. The original request code, so you can tell which target activity the results are from, a result code, so you can determine success or failure, and an intent that's typically loaded with a bundle containing any result data items. On activity result will be called in the source activity both when the target activity explicitly calls finish and also if the user clicks the Android back button to leave the target activity.